I could feel the excitement building inside of me. Or was that fear? It's funny how in the world that we live in, when we're faced with tremendous opportunity, how those two feelings can kind of coincide. So I was uh, with some friends, we were at the beach and we were um, enjoying uh, some surf. Uh, we were doing some surfing. And um, it's one of those things where if you've ever been to the beach where you're like, you create a group of friends you've never actually met before, but you're just out there together and all of a sudden you kind of get this human connection. And we're just hanging out, having a good time. And all of a sudden, we look out and we see the monster of all waves. I mean, this thing is building and it is getting taller to the point where it takes out the horizon line. And we're all standing there looking at this thing and you know, you can feel the, like, the sand start disappearing from underneath your feet and you can feel it pulling you towards that wave. And um, instantly we knew that something uh, something special was about to happen, that this was beyond your normal wave, this was something so much bigger, so much more intense. And when we looked at it, we realized we effectively had three choices in that moment without even saying a word to each other. One, we could duck. <laughs> so as that wave comes at you, you have the choice. If you duck deep enough and you get down far enough, well, maybe that thing will just roll right over you, you safely come up the other side and you watch it roar to shore. Got past that one. Good. Or, option number two, you can look at the wave, with the shore, look at the wave, with the shore, and make a determination, can I make it to shore? And maybe you just start booking for shore, and you hope you can outrun the wave. But there is a third choice. You time the wave, you kind of get a feel for it, you find that inner courage, and then you grab that wave with everything you've got and you ride it into shore. Now in that moment, we didn't know each other, but we all looked at each other without a single word. A human bond was instantly made because we knew exactly what we needed to do. In the world of life, in the technology space, does it not feel like we are constantly being hit by these waves? One after another after another. And they seem to be getting bigger. They seem to be getting more intense, more impressive with each wave that comes. We have to, as a society, decide how are we going to respond to these waves? And when we see these waves, we feel that sense of excitement that sense of fear, and that sense of opportunity. VR, AR, MR, XR, AI, AGI, Web 3.0, and don't forget the metaverse. I mean, for those of us in technology, that's a lot. And for those outside of technology, phew, that's a real lot. But if it helps take a little bit of the edge off, remember, this isn't the first time we've seen this, mainframe to desktop, desktop to mobile, dots to GUI, internet, you know, we've seen it before. I remember seeing the first PC that showed up in our school. Honestly, nobody really knew what to do with it. It just sort of showed up. And then we all started playing around with it. And then a math teacher came along and said, this is cool. And then usually a couple kids, maybe not, starting for the football team, fell in love with this thing. <laughs> and this little lab started, and then two PCs, then three PCs, and so on and so forth. But when this has happened in the past, it's changed the way we work, it's changed the way we live, it's changed the way we communicate, and it's changed the way we human. It's changed the way we connect with each other. But it can change in a very positive way, depending on how we choose to respond. But thank gosh, right? I mean, thank gosh, it's finally slowing down, right? We, we're all able to whew, take a break. I mean, the last 10 years have been a lot, but this next 10, it looks like we're going to finally get a chance to just chill, right? Just kick back, take a break. Because look, Ginny here, she can help us, right? She's going to give us some 
some hope. Well, in the next five years to 10 years, maybe, uh, we're, well, we're going to turn more corners and transform more industries than we have in the past century. Well, that's not very helpful. Okay, all right. Well, what does Ginny know? I mean, she ran that little company, uh, all right, IBM. Okay, so I guess Ginny might know a few things. So yes, it is going to accelerate. It is going to continue to build. And yes, it's going to be intimidating. But what do we do? We have to choose. Are we going to duck? Are we going to swim for shore? Or are we going to ride? So I'm going to tell you about a great man. Somebody who had to deal with this situation in his life. He's somebody who had to deal with all those emotions, fear, excitement, opportunity. What was he going to do? This was a man that was in an industry that was seeing a monster change, monster wave. It was the photography business, and it was going from analog to digital. And what was he going to do? On top of everything else, he had these two incredibly annoying sons. Incredibly, I mean, one way more annoying than the other one. But anyway, two very annoying sons, both jumping up and down about this thing called digital. But he was in film. That's all he knew. Commercial photography, portrait photography, wedding photography, you name it, it was all in film. By the way, film, for those that aren't familiar with it, is what we used to put on our cell phones to take photographs. So his whole world was changing. And he had to make a choice. What is he going to do? And these changes, by the way, were big changes, and they were scary changes. They involved banks. And by the way, this was not proven technology. Like, it's very easy to think back now, especially those who didn't necessarily know the world of film, to think, well, it was obvious. Oh, no, it was not. <laughs> okay? First of all, film was king. Digital was considered extremely, like, unreliable, grainy, quality issues, the whole bit. So he had to make this choice with all these scary challenges, and it wasn't quite there yet, and everything else, but he was listening to this other generation who was saying, there's something here. What do we do? Do we duck the wave? Do we swim for shore? And at that moment, it was chosen. Let's ride. This family decided to go all in and give it everything they had. And if you haven't figured it out yet, this great man was my dad. And he was then and is now my superhero. Because not only did he invest in, the, in the, uh, the technology, but he also invested in the next generation, his sons. Well, the company went on and did really great things, even though it was bumpy and challenging and exciting and all of those things that you can imagine. But as it went forward, it grew exponentially and went into video eventually, and then 360 media. And then along came this next generation who said, hey, there's this thing called XR Media. And then it was time for another generation to decide to believe, to invest, to say maybe they can see something special that's beyond what my generation can see. So around the time my father was dealing with this, a little bit before that, there was another company dealing with a similar challenge. They were actually approached with this thing called a digital camera. The name of the company that was dealing with this was called Kodak. And the gentleman was Stephen Sasson. But here's the part that's crazy. Stephen Sasson, who invented the digital camera, well, he worked for Kodak. Let that sink in for a second. So he works for Kodak. He approaches Kodak and says, hey, I've got this incredible new invention, and I want to share it with the, the, the leadership of this incredible organization. And at the time, they were top of the world. They were absolutely dominant. So what did they do? Well, the leadership said, let's go all in. Steven, you know what? We're spinning up a, a tiger team. We're going to invest. We're going to give you some funding. You know what else we're going to do? We're going to key in with another technology firm. We're going to connect together. Maybe we can come up with a device that could capture this technology, put it in your pocket, expand to new horizons. Look at the opportunities in front of us. What kind of world would it be today for those who were part of the Kodak team had leadership seen that vision at that time. However, instead, what the leadership said was, 
Hey, Steve, Prince has been around with us for over 100 years. Nobody's complaining about Prince, and nobody really wants to look at photographs on a TV screen. And by the way, that's what we used to call it, a TV screen, just so you know, okay? Now it's monitors, devices, uh, all these are, but TV screens was what we had back then, and that was what they said. But then again, it's fair to pick on Kodak and think, well, you know what, it's just Kodak, that's their issue, that's what they dealt with. There's no other companies that have ever had to deal with an issue like that. How many of us remember Blockbuster Night? So Blockbuster Night was an amazing night. We all had so much fun with Blockbuster Night. Little company comes along to the leadership team of Blockbuster and says, hey, listen, we don't have the stores that you guys have, but we've got this streaming thing that we're doing, and it seems we're working really well. Would you be interested in partnering with us and maybe we could work together and grow? Blockbuster said, you know what? I'm not sure how we're going to do rewind fees with streaming. We're a retail company. Okay? They're correct. They are not in the streaming service. As a matter of fact, if you want to learn more about the Blockbuster story, you can actually watch a movie. It's called the last. Uh, it's actually called the last Blockbuster, and it is streaming on Netflix. <laughs> so let's circle back for a minute. Let's talk about these technologies that, that we're seeing today: virtual reality, augmented reality, all these incredible technologies. Why are they so amazing? What is so spectacular about them. Well, one of the things is in the world of business, they're making a difference, okay? If you can move the needle 5% for enterprise, that can be the difference of billions of dollars. 5%, okay? How's VR doing? VR learners, 400% faster than trading in a classroom. Enterprise takes notice. It is not lost to me that I am doing this presentation right now in a university. It should not be lost in the universities that that statistic exists. Lean in, embrace, ride. Now, augmented reality is effectively the digital layer that we put in the world around us. Snapchat, face filters, all that good stuff, that's AR, you're gonna be seeing a lot more of that in the future. But here's the one that everybody likes to talk about today. Augmented reality has sort of moved into now, we're talking a lot about artificial general intelligence. What the heck is that? Well, let's take a second look. Representation of generalized human cognitive abilities, ability to make judgments under uncertainty. Well, that clears that right up, doesn't it? I'll boil it down for us, okay, ready? We are teaching computers to be able to learn and reason by themselves. What possibly could go wrong? <laughs> I mean, we've made all these great movies about it. I mean, they always have such shiny lights in the sky. And the people that are left at the end are usually getting along fairly well. So here's the thing. These technologies are very powerful. So we need to make sure the right people are helping make them available to all of us and that we are using them for the power of good. So it's one of the reasons why we want to make sure that everybody here understands these technologies can make a difference in your life, even in a small way. It matters. Lean in. Now, how do we do this, though? How do we follow my father's example? Well, for one, just look for small things in your life. Don't think about it like it has to be a big deal. I mean, it can simply be just whether you're in school, you can look at some of the new tools that are becoming available. Maybe you have kids that like to play in headsets and stuff. Well, throw the thing on and try it out. Just expose yourself to the point where you at least start to understand the technology. These technologies have the ability to give us superpowers. Superpowers both on the battlefield or in the operating room. And it's up to us to decide where we're gonna focus these technologies. And as we've all heard this amazing quote, with great power comes great responsibility. So let's talk about how we can use this for the greater good. So our team, and I personally had the experience of being able to work with this incredible organization to create a virtual voyage. Now this is an organization that literally takes hospital ships and goes to the corners of the earth that are the hardest to get to and helps families so in need, transforming not only their lives, but also this, the entire communities that they're part of. But one of the challenges that this organization has is being able to share their mission because you know getting everybody on the ship is 
tough, it's expensive, especially if the ship's in the middle of a part of the world that's so hard to reach. But what if, what if we could actually bring people to the ship digitally? What if we could actually take this whole audience on a trip, a virtual trip to the operating room? An operating room you wouldn't even get access to if you're there physically because it's a sterile environment. Or the bridge, which is a secure environment. But maybe the, the actual captain of the ship is waiting for you on the bridge to talk to you and give you a tour. And he doesn't have to leave the ship, or in this case, she doesn't have to leave the ship, or you don't have to leave your kitchen, <laughs> okay? And everybody gets to learn more about their mission and their opportunity. Now, here's the thing. The technologies that we're talking about are so transformative. We are talking about possibly things like, believe it or not, curing cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, that's for real. We're actually having these conversations. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I'm just saying at least it's even being talked about. But even more exciting, if it all goes well, we're all gonna have AI DJs in our cars soon. I mean, curing cancer, AI DJs in your car, I mean, come on. It doesn't really get any better. So when you're thinking about these tremendous advancements in technology, the advent of electricity, putting feet on the moon, and the inter internet coming to life. There is one common thread with all of them, and it took us all coming together to accomplish them and then bring them to the world. So as we stand in the ocean together today, whether you're here in the auditorium or maybe you're at home watching video. We are all in this ocean together. Even if we don't always love each other or like each other and we get at each other's nerves, because let's be honest, we do. But one of the things about new technologies is they can be a level set. They can bring us closer together. So here we stand together in the ocean looking out and here comes another set of waves. And we have a choice to make together. Do we duck? Do we swim for shore? Or do we find our surfboard, find our inner courage, look at each other and say, let's ride. Thank you very much.